All right, buddy. So what's your name and where are you from? My name is P. I'm from the Mile High. That's Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado. And uh, you got a YouTube Colorado. channel, correct? It's uh, Focus, or I don't know if it's Focus. I haven't watched any recently, but I've seen a few on my feed about others, the others side of things, the non-gang members, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're going to get into it a little deeper here in a second. Uh, well, first, tell the people, man, uh, what the hell sent you to prison? Back in the day, whenever I was 20, um, I went in for second degree murder. So, Damn. yeah. Um, well, the tables have turned yeah, on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Okay, yeah, okay. crazy. Second degree murder, man. It's not a laughing matter, but at the same time, you know, I put a spin on things yeah. different than others, man. Uh, What the hell? Tell us how this shit happened. Can you talk about it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I'll let um, you run with it then, man. Yeah, so. All right, cool. Yeah, I was 20 years old, man. Young, dumb, foolhardy. Uh, it just, it, long story short. I was with some buddies and we was just trying to get a sack of weed and call up some girls and get some liquor. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so we went to a certain part of the neighborhood. It was uh, my partner and his partner. And we went to a certain part of Denver looking for the weed. Now this was before dispensaries, you know, so we still had to go through the weed, man. So um, we get there, and I guess my partner's partner has some type of bad blood, or they had some type of history, so they started scrapping. And so it went in, like, increments. They would get tired and then go back at it. So uh, one thing happened after another, and then my partner's partner started shooting off a gun in the air in a public vicinity, so, some craziness. So anyways, this truck pulls up right behind me, and I don't even know these guys from Adam. And I, I'm just thinking the worst, like, okay, they, they're going to see what just happened. So we need to get out of here. So they're headed to my door and I see the guys behind me get out. So what I do is I kind of like back my truck up into them to give us a little bit of time to get out of there. So I opened up the passenger side door, kind of like pulled them in and got out of there. So it was like, 10 minutes down the road, we was at the liquor store because, of course, we still got to get the liquor in us and all that, you know, being young and yeah. dumb. Yeah. Can't forget the liquor. And, yeah, I can't forget. <laughs> I know that's right, man. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, you just been through some shit. You, you know, you got to still get the liquor. <laughs> got to get the liquor and the women, baby. Can't forget them. Come on, girl. Come yeah, on, girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the night's still promising, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so anyways, I'm sitting in the parking lot of this liquor store and my partner and his partner go in there and get to get it. And I guess I had like, you know, what a lot of guys had. I'm, I'm sure you probably had it like a premonition. You know, you just you just feel it in the air like some stuff's about to go down. Right. Yeah. And uh, so at the time I had a 40 caliber uh, Glock 22. So. I just felt it. I felt like, you know, I just needed to have it out. Something was about to happen. So I just, I put one in the chamber and just sat it in my lap. And so about one minute after that, that same truck comes pulling in to the parking lot. And on my left side, I started rolling down the window a little bit. And I'm like, is that the same truck? Is that the same truck? So one of the guys started walking towards, towards my window. And then he reached behind my back. And, you know, how I was how I was angled, I wasn't able to really just, you know, train a shot. And so I just picked it up out of my lap and just like shot out the window. Now, I was trying to like just shoot him in the shoot him in the shoulder. And what happened was because I had the hollow points in it and all of that, like it missed about like an inch. Like on my discovery, it said like it missed an inch and hit his A order, which is like the main valve uh to to your heart so my gun had jammed i slipped out the the passenger side uh, door and there's like an alley that goes next to the liquor store and like this old fire department and this woman cop she comes jumping out of nowhere and she had like her service uniform like uh undone because she yeah. was over there messing with the, the the firemen over there but she was shitted and so 
uh, she was like, put the gun down, put the gun down. And I was scared like she was going to uh, shoot me or something. So like I tossed the gun in between her feet and it slid, uh, slid across in between her feet, but she still thought I had the gun. So I had to like coach her and let tell her, um, you know, I'm putting, I'm interlacing my fingers, I'm putting them behind my head, I'm getting down on one knee, getting on my stomach. And then so these firemen came rushing out. And so they was actually the one ones to subdue me. But yeah, that was that was it, man. Damn. I mean, how old were you? Uh, 20 years old. 20 years old. Did you have uh, any kind of paperwork to go with your weapon? Were you a felon already or what? You know how the streets are. Nah, I just I just had a gun that, you know, <laughs> I bought through some homeboys yeah, or whatever. Yeah, we don't need yeah, we don't even know yeah. where the gun came from or anything. But yeah, no, you yeah. know, so it was it was definitely not registered or anything like that. No, no. no okay, no. were you a felon though? Um, no. This yeah, this is my first time as an adult. Okay. So you, you know, if you were a felon, it would have it would have ended probably a lot worse with the time frame of how much you did in prison. Well, how much time did you do in prison for this? Second degree murder? Let me guess. Let me if I were to guess. And I haven't watched any of your content. That's my word above. Okay. Oh, Second degree right. murder. Uh, from how you told it. I would say seven years. Nah, I got an 18 year sentence. 18. Damn. Yeah, 18. <laughs> yeah. But it was close as far as how much time I actually did on it. I did 10 10 straight oh that, so. oh i was close 10 piece yeah. seven that's yeah, close yeah. enough no, man yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know okay yeah. so 18 years you do 10 off of that and you're going to colorado they got well first you know what let me back this up man okay let me lady, ladies and gentlemen you know if there's one thing we can learn already from this story alone is you know one thing can turn to another really really quick man and uh like you said i'm sure you had no idea this shit was gonna happen i'm sure the guy who got out the truck had no i earthly earthly idea was gonna happen you know you could just aim for you know a lot of people say oh i'm not gonna i don't want i, I wasn't trying to take his life that's why i shot him in the calf or the leg well guess what you know how many arteries uh, many people will say oh. the leg is the worst spot to be shot at you know and then you got different ammunition that break apart inside your body, like he said. So, you know, just one round in an unlethal area can turn into a very lethal thing and the man can lose his life. So, ladies and gentlemen, be very careful. You never know what you're going to walk into, even with a basic-ass street fight. Guys guys end up doing stupid stuff, man. You know, as you can see, uh, oh. you, you, you did. You know, uh, both of them did, if you ask me. But anyways... That's neither here nor there. This is uh, the future, and you're doing good now. Uh, we're gonna go Sorry. into the we're gonna go into the lockup side of things now, man. What do you think? Uh, we got a little good bit, yeah, we got a little bit of a delay, so I apologize to the viewers if you see that. Um, all right, so county jail. What county jail did you start it off at? I started off in Adams County Jail, and Adams County Jail is kind of like just like. Um, uh, in outskirts of Denver, it's like it's all Denver area. I would say it's like the suburbs of of Denver. So yeah, that's Adams County. So that's where I started off at. Okay, was it? Uh, I mean, were you prepared for jail in any way? Were you? You know, you said you're out there ripping and running, but I'm yeah. guessing this was your first time in jail. Well, I had done some uh, juvie time in Florida, but yeah. And that kind of, you know, it's not adult time, but, you know, just the whole rigmarole of it, you know, kind of, I guess, prepared me to, to go. The motions. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 The motions okay. are pretty much basic uh, nationwide. You know, they, they pretty much follow the same kind of motions. But, uh, OK, yeah. so this is your first time into the adult side of yeah. county jail. Uh, I mean... Did you have any issues first going in? Was it a rough jail? Was it gang infested? Well, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was definitely all of the above. 
um, they put me, because of my crime, they put me on like the maximum side and they had the pods over there. So I was in the maximum and that was all of the, all of the guys were like high uh, type of crimes and, and guys headed back to prison. So I was in there and I did have a weird situation. Like I really wasn't tested yet, but, um, uh, there was an instance where this guy was trying to ask me about, you know, what my crime was. And, you know, he tried to hook me up with like some zoom zooms and wham whams and a cup of coffee. And, uh, so anyways, oh, he, the he was trying, he was trying to sign seal the deal with the coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> I've just been through all this. I just want somebody to talk to. Like, I, I need somebody to hear me out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But what happened was this guy left in the middle of the night. And the thing was, I didn't give him, like, any real information. I just, like, lied and said I was in here. I didn't want to tell nobody I was actually in there for just now, you know, shooting some uh, someone. But, yeah, he wound up uh, overnight getting taken out of the pod because he was trying to snitch on me yeah I found on that your case huh? later yeah yeah so that was one of the first lessons learned there so i mean in this county jail uh was is there segregation in any way shape or form um no in and this in this county jail there wasn't really any segregation actually yes so if you're black They'll put you in a black cell if you're white, you know, so on and so, so forth. And but with other being Asian, being Cambodian, it's like they just use you to like fill the status quo. So, you know, if there's some odd cell where, you know, a black guy or white guy, whoever happens to have a single cell, they'll be like, you know, just shoot this guy in there. So um, I have to deal with, you know, which is cool. I get along with everybody, but um, they'll just put me in with in anybody. Any yeah. race. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what the COs are saying, too. It's cool. They get along with everybody. <laughs> yeah, 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 they do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, don't get along. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he an islander, man. Just throw him anywhere. Throw him, throw him anywhere, man. You know? All right. Uh, so you go into this jail, man. It's got a little bit of segregation. Uh, this guy jumps on your case. You see him in the courtroom? Did he literally come into the courtroom? Did he get that far? No, no, because I gave them a bunch of bogus ass information. It was my attorneys because I had two attorneys or public pretenders, but they, they was actually good. But um, they told me, Mr. Nix, you need to, you know, be careful who you talk to in there. And because um, even if you're giving false information. So whenever they said that, I was like, it was that guy. Yeah, it was that guy. So. That's how I found out. But, you know, all the information he had wasn't even good. So he just did did all that in vain. <laughs> That's crazy, man. You yeah. know, uh, happens every day, though. Happens every single day, ladies and gentlemen. Multiple, hundred times a day. Uh, you know, that's why it's so different. In some places, they want you to show your paperwork and what you're in there for. In some places, you don't dare do it, you know, because... They jump on your case, man. Uh, it's not so much really. It's really when you got murder case or something really bad that you don't talk about. You know, no one's going to jump on your uh, damn DUI case or nothing like that. You know, so. All right, man. So, I mean, did you get tested at all in this jail? Yeah, a couple of times. I got in a, a couple of fights there. Um so like my first fight there was with this guy. I forgot it, it was over like a, no, now I know what it was, was because I used to do tattoos, but I used to do the picking, the plucks, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. And you can kind of get a staple or whatever, you know, rig it up and, you know, you make your ink. But so anyways, we were switching cells. And so the guy that I was tattooing on, um, uh, he wanted me to come to his cell, his cell. He wanted to go to uh, go over to my cell for the night so we can tattoo. And so I don't know. Uh, I, I just started like cracking jokes about something. I didn't really any, uh, mean anything about it, uh, mean anything by it. But, you know, something about the honey bun. I, I still can't remember what exactly it was about. It and always just starts like, over I, a honey I got bun. Mad. Yeah, I got mad. I was like, I'll just take that damn honey bun. You know, screw that honey bun. 
And uh, I act like I'm going to go get it. And uh, so he takes off. He takes off on me and he's pushing me up like against the desk. And so, you know, I try to get my arm around his neck. And so we tussle around a little bit. And so I, I wound up getting to where I had him in like a half choke. And I'm trying to like swing around and hit him in the in the head. But he has his head down. And every time it was like, <laughs> it felt like it was cracking my knuckles open. I had like a swollen hand for a couple of days. But then, you know, he was like, uh, I'm good. I'm good. And, you know, I've always respected that. You know, if somebody says they're good, you know, no need to go any further than that. But, yeah, that was kind of like my first little, you know, tussle or whatever. So. Damn honey buns, guaranteed to make you <laughs> smile and frown at times, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. I am I can only imagine, man, you know, you probably had a rough ride in there emotionally, you know, because you were fighting yeah. that case and you really didn't know what the hell you were going. I was facing a lot of time as well, man. You know, pretty much you might as well have said life. 50 years, as life to someone, you know. So I know what it feels like to be waiting to go to trial and, and, and all that stuff, man. Uh, what kept what kept you sane in there? You know, what what helped you the most? You think in jail, going through these tribulations? Yeah, in the county jail, man. Um, shoot, just just meeting any, uh, meeting everybody. You know, being here in Colorado, being an other. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, guys just have like a genuine interest, like not on no funny stuff, but you you just really don't hardly see any others, you know what I mean? So people were, were cordial. So, you know, I had a good rapport with uh, the Pisces, with the Blacks, the GDs, the Crips, the Bloods, the local gangs here in Denver, like the GKIs and the, the NSMs and stuff like that. So I just got along with, uh, with everybody and we would play spades. So that helped, you know, kill the time, bet on football and, you know, just your regular stuff. But uh, that's whenever I really got into working out. <laughs> And that almost uh, became, not became a problem, but I remember doing legs the first time and I was on the top tier. Oh, like damn. I almost like fell down the stairs. One of the guys had to grab, grab me by my shirt and pull me backwards. So I fell, f- fell backwards. But yeah, I was like, man, this, this workout stuff is crazy. <laughs> hey, yeah. I had the same experience one time. I did calves. We were doing calf raises off the stairs. And then the next day... Mm-hmm. I couldn't walk. I couldn't walk. It literally felt like someone done cut off my calf. So it was crazy. Uh, you definitely take it slow if you all haven't worked legs before. That's yeah. Just yeah. That's just a piece of advice. Um, I was gonna ask. Oh, okay. So you you're in this jail, and you see all these gangs, and you're able to just jump around, play spades with whoever you know. You're another. Uh, mm-hmm. Who would you say was someone of? your more favorite groups to hang around with? <laughs> um, hmm. I really like hanging out with the, uh, the, the Pisces really, man. Cause we have sort of similar backgrounds, you know, they're, um, the, the way that we live kind of, you know, like in the Asian communities, we were, we're small, but we're tight knit in the community. So the Pisces are kind of like that too. They're, they're, about their country, the nationalists, and so they they really look out for each other. They show love, and and whenever it comes down to it, everybody's everybody's on board. You know, everybody's with the ships, and so that's whenever they started teaching me like a bunch of Spanish, and you know, just all the the bad stuff. You know what I mean? You always start off with the bad stuff. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they was cool. So, um, and then also a lot of the old heads. I picked a lot of the brains of the old heads that. Um, we're going back to the CDOC. And so, yeah, um, it was the old heads and the Pisces that I like to, um, you know, hang out and just just chill with, you know? Yeah. Well, that's cool, man. Uh, all right. So you get your 10 piece. I mean, were you happy with the 10 or were you happy with the sentencing? I guess you could say, um, I, don't think, I don't think you were happy with the sentencing. You know, because yeah. in a I, sense, it was self-defense, <laughs> you know, in a sense, you know, if you were sense. to go by yeah. the law, that man came into your car first. Correct. So, I mean, regardless, <laughs> if it wasn't registered, it's still, you know, so it's a toss up and, you know, it's very toss up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Actually, I was because uh, I did take a plea because I just didn't want to 
fight this case whenever the gun, the instrument that was used uh, uh, to, you know, kill the guy was right there. And then the guy was like, you know, a couple of feet or yards up ahead. So I didn't want to bring that to a jury and try and explain, you know, all that nonsense. So I took a deal for like 16 to 24 and he wound up having, you know, some type of mercy and giving me two years um, from the less that I could get. But uh, I just remember being in the, the, the most thing that affected me in the courtroom was seeing that this, this guy had daughters. He had two beautiful daughters and just tears streaming down their face. And it's like, I, you know, I still can't get that image out of my out of my head. So that's, you know, what I try and bring that direction whenever I talk to people is like, hey, you, you know, you're going to mess your life up. And, and not only that. You're, you're going to mess up families' lives, you know? So, yeah. And fathers, too, man. Y'all got to, you know, Absolutely. you got you to gotta think like this. Just the same way that you put it. That dude should have been thinking, too, man. You know, because whenever I get into situations now, I think about, is it going to take me away from my kids? You yeah. know? And you got to think, man. I know guys have a lot of pride, but... You got to walk away, man, sometimes. You never know what the hell is going to happen. And it is what it is. But y'all were young, man. And just a horrible turn of events, man. Rest in peace to that man. And and, and uh, condolences to his family. That was sad, man, bringing that part up. Damn. Yeah.